so if you are an independent pharmacy and you know you you are involved with uh, with precepting and and you're you're having students into your pharmacy on a regular basis, how how can you leverage that to benefit your pharmacy and and interesting ways? Because so many pharmacies already, you know the 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 normal day to day urgency and and um, you know patients coming in every day and and the things that have to be done often can kind of overshadow the things that you want to do or want to implement. Uh, do you have any advice for, you know, one of those pharmacies that's like, oh, yeah, the next time we're going to do this because things will be different, but things are never different. <laughs> you know, there's all those urgent things always, always occur. So, you know, how do you implement change and take advantage of that? How do you do that? And um and the hard answer is, well, you got to pre-plan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's pre-planning. Um, and but this, I, I think this is really interesting, interesting question. So um, sometimes when you say what you just said of like, well, I'm going to do that or get to that. I just need an hour. I just need a day just to sit down and think about it. Right. And then it kind of stays in there and that thing. And it's because a lot of times what you're wanting to do uh, takes more than an hour to think through it and do it. It's, it's a larger task. But this pre-planning about your Appy students or having pharmacy uh, pharmacy students with you um, through th in the, during their fourth year or even even during their um, introductory experience, maybe after their first or second year, depending on your program, uh, that can take you maybe an hour of planning. Okay, so that is accomplishable. So let's take it one hour. Um, that uh, first step I want you to do is to look at your entire year. So colleges of pharmacy will provide you your full year list of students, um, usually in like February, right, for the next academic year. So you have time to see all the rotation students you're going to have um, for, you know, that graduating class. Like in this specific instance, it's 22 to 23. Next year's class is 23 to 24, right? So I know Right now, my entire list of assigned Appy students um, from that's, that's going to start in May through next April. I know that right now. So I want you to look at your entire year and think about, um, okay, those big projects or things that you have going on. How can maybe it, you know, it might be too much, right, for you to, for a four-week student, a four-week Appy to accomplish uh, during, during four weeks. So maybe thinking these long-term things of how does this maybe line up with when I have students? If you have students grouped up all together and you've got one every single month, that could be, you know, it's one train of thought you could go down. But if you realize, like, I have four months without students and then they're kind of scattered throughout in the fall or they're scattered throughout, that might impact on what you can do and when you want to do it. So that's step one. It's just like, hey, let's step back and look at when are they at for the entire year. Um, and then the next step is to think about, um, and you know, to not make it, it's just what I, how I, um, communicate this with my uh, with my other preceptors that I work with is just what are the things that are aggravating you right now and what are the things that are causing you anxiety or are just like that I wish I could do this but I never have time to those are the things then you want to jot down to then try to map to uh the when those rotation students are there so you're starting backwards of like here's my big hairy goal or the thing that's giving me anxiety how could you know each of these rotation students throughout this year help me accomplish this um, and so then um, you need to create a really specific syllabus. And I have a template to all this. And I have like um, little 20 minute videos that'll kind of walk you through this process. They're on the NCPA website. And I have a draft um, syllabus for you that you could actually download and use today too. But what's really important to once you've thought through, okay, these are some big ideas that really they can maybe help with. Um, and, and walking it backwards down to specific activities, you've got to set that expectation with the students. And this is all prior to when they get there. So that's why the syllabus is so important that in your schedule, you are like, hey, student, I expect half of your day to be like doing all the fires and the people coming in and help us answer the phone and help us do these things. And then from one to five, I want you to work on my long-term projects or these long-term ideas. And so you've got to just create that um, carved out time for them too and that they understand and know what they're supposed to be doing otherwise yeah they might just stand around and start helping or just filling it because they're not really sure what you're expecting them to do so it starts big picture then then carve down and say i you're actually going to spend you know two half days of this week i want you to think about this other project don't be sucked into my workflow today i need you to be out doing these other things so hopefully that's a some 
tangible tips um, to get there. Um, but there, there are some really good, it's under um, preceptor resources under a, a NCP's website if you want to get the actual like syllabus and kind of some templates to help you through to implement implement these ideas. Perfect. So it sounds like um, the key is to definitely uh, pre-plan and be intentional. You're not going to accidentally uh, accomplish an amazing goal. <laughs> um, right. And sometimes it's just listening to this podcast. Great. Step one. He's just looking <laughs> great. You listen to this podcast. Uh, I've heard some preceptors who said, oh, I just really hadn't thought about that. I mean, they are, they're just used to, okay, now you're hearing my workflow, which is great. Some students really need that. Some students really don't. And it can really help you with like maybe serving on your local CPSN board or serving on a committee that you're on. Maybe they can be the one that goes to this committee meeting and takes notes for you. Maybe they can be like, they can involve them in all of those things that you're doing outside of the busyness of the pharmacy. So you'd be able to carve out and go, oh, they can do things other than the busyness of my pharmacy. But recognizing that's still important and you might have to um, individualize that based on their own experience. If they've had a lot of experience and they're like a ton of feedback, I'm really comfortable in community, then those um, students, I'm, I'm really thinking more like, let's, let's then aim more of your time to be on things that you've never done or to help us in in new ways, right? So we, we have to, of course, be mindful of that. But some of my preceptors are just, they're just they've said, well, oh, oh yeah, they can make those phone calls for me or they can follow up with these things or write that meeting notes or maybe go to that thing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, everything that you're doing to you, um, give back to the profession is something we need to show and involve them with, right? So yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm.